Okay, 2 Corinthians 2. Now pay attention to this one. Really powerful stuff here. Paul is continuing on in this letter, the second letter that he writes to this once dysfunctional church. And he says in verse 5, I'm not overstating it when I say that the man who caused all the trouble hurt all of you more than he hurt me. So he's talking about this guy that was totally living in rebellious sin, unrepentant sin against God. And yet he said he was a Christian. Remember, they were a pretty dysfunctional church. He said, most of you opposed him and that was punishment enough. Now, however, he says, it is time to forgive and comfort him. Otherwise, he may be overcome by discouragement. So I urge you now to reaffirm your love for him. What a great snapshot here of how we should deal with sin in the church. Now, let me be clear. He's talking about a guy who was living in sin, but when it was called out in him and he realized it was sinful, he did repent. So we're not talking about a guy who's living in sin and still living in sin and still trying to be part of the church and pretend like everything's okay. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a guy who was living in pretty blatant sin, but who now has repented of it. He's changed his heart and his attitude toward Christ about it. And what Paul is saying is, don't, you know, don't be mean and hold it over his head. What a great picture. He says in the church, love him encourage him, reaffirm your love. Man, what a great what a great instruction for us in our churches today that when someone really when a sinner really does repent, that we embrace them and love them just like God does through Jesus Christ. And then at the bottom here of this short chapter he says our lives are like are a Christ-like fragrance rising up to God, but this fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved and by those who are perishing. So he says, you know, when when we live our life in front of people, Christians are going to look at it and say, man, you're, it's great. I, I love to see how you're honoring God in your life. But people who have that veil over their eyes still, you know, people who don't care about, about Christ, they don't care about honoring God. And think about this in your own life. Those people are going to perceive what we're doing differently. They're going to be threatened by the way we live, by the standards that we live by. They're going to be threatened by the values that we have. And, and Paul's saying that. He says, this is... To Christ, our lives are a fragrance. That When we live to honor God, it's a fragrance to God. And in our other believers, brothers and sisters in Christ, look at it and it's, it's a great perfume to them. But for those who are perishing, for those who, who still don't see it God's way, they don't like how we live. And they're going to they're gonna challenge the way we live. Let's remember that because it's certainly it was true 2,000 years ago. And boy, how true is it today in our world as well. And he says in verse 16, to those who are perishing, we are a dreadful smell of death and doom. But to those who are being saved, we are a life-giving perfume. And who is adequate for such a task as this? What a great short chapter 2 Corinthians 2 is. So go ahead and read it for yourself now. And we'll see you in the next chapter.